No company has clogged every corner of the earth and our arteries quite like McDonald's has. And if you were watching the Golden Globes, you may have caught the Golden Arches latest ad campaign called Signs. It starts off by showing marquees outside of McDonald's restaurants displaying messages like God protect the USA. And even tastelessly exploiting tragedy with phrases like Boston strong and we remember 9-11 to sell fast food. It's a campaign many are calling opportunistic and trashy. But others have responded with, oh, that's really sentimental. McDonald's really cares about their communities. Except that next to Walmart, McDonald's is the second worst paying corporation in the country, according to 24-7 Wall Street. And just last month, the U.S. Labor Relations Board filed a complaint against the Golden Arches, accusing them of work violations. According to Reuters, complaints were filed in 78 cases claiming that McDonald's workers across the country were fired or intimidated for participating in union organizing and in a national protest movement calling for higher wages. Some of the company's horrific practices mentioned include not paying overtime, directly violating federal wage laws, not giving workers static hours or steady salaries, and even making them pay for and professionally clean their own uniforms. This is particularly ridiculous when you consider that most fast food workers are only making on average $18,000 a year. But no worries, McDonald's cares so much that it even came up with its own employee budget to help workers live comfortably. Step one on the budget, get a second job. I kid you not. Check this out. On Mickey D's sample budget, the company included a line for a second income that would produce nearly as much income as you would be making at McDonald's. Oh, and did I say live comfortably? Because apparently this doesn't account for heating, as you notice by the big fat zero allocated for the basic amenity. Many of you may just be thinking that fast food jobs are temporary positions for students who depend on their parents for heat and shelter. But the reality is that two thirds of workers in the industry are between 20 and 54 years old, according to the Center for Economic and Policy Research. Meaning we're talking about adults who are not only supporting themselves, but their families. So what happens when people are paid wages that don't even allow them to afford basic needs? Well, it ends up costing all of us. McDonald's alone costs American taxpayers $1.2 billion to subsidize low wages. That's because according to UC Berkeley, over half of frontline fast food workers rely on at least one public assistance program like food stamps. All of this for a company that's making the planet sick. See, it was only after tremendous pressure from documentaries such as Food, Inc. that McDonald's claimed to stop using ammoniated beef. Yes, until 2012, 70% of all beef patties in America contain ammoniated beef, a disgusting gray slab of processed beef that's doused in a bath of toxic ammonium hydroxide. And don't even get me started on what's actually inside a chicken McNugget. Mmm, yummy, it's McDonald's Chicken McNuggets. Chicken, water and salt, and rich flour, yellow corn flour, bleached wheat flour, baking soda, corn starch, wheat starch, modified food starch, dextrose, riboflavin, folic acid, spices, and thiamine mononitrate, which can lead to severe liver damage. Hot! The list actually goes on and on. So you can also talk about McDonald's without mentioning the fact that it's largest, it's the largest purchaser of beef and pork in the country and second greatest purchaser of chicken thereby making it the largest contributor to the horrific practices of factory farming thus climate change fortunately though all of these frightening factors are contributing to a widespread international backlash against the company its attempt to globalize has been thwarted in places like Bolivia Iceland and Jamaica where the fast food giant has either been banned altogether or didn't quite catch on with the locals not to mention the fact that right here in America, millennials aren't attracted to the company anymore. Just last year, McDonald's profits fell 30%. And though I can go on and on, I'm going to stop here so that I don't get sued for McLibel, the same way that two UK activists were for simply distributing anti-McDonald's pamphlets. So, no matter how many signs McDonald's tries to placate the public with and tragedies it tries to exploit, 
it won't change the fact that people are no longer loving it.